Joe, you look like a man in need of a patio. Well, Roger, I got the hard part done. Now I need your help. You sure did. You dug it down just to the right depth. Take a look over here. What I'm finding right here is subsoil. That's that tan material. That's where we want to be to start the patio. Here we have almost 12 inches of topsoil. Now, if we put the patio on top of that in the wintertime, it would absorb water, freeze, and move the patio up and down. Before long, you wouldn't have a very good patio. But because you dug down to the subsoil, we're all set to start building up. And what we're going to use for the patio is this bluestone. This comes from Pennsylvania. It's called natural cleft because it's split out and it has these little ridges in it. After they split it out, they take and put it on a saw and they cut it into dimensional pieces. This is an 18 by 24. You can get a 20 by 30, 2 by 3, everything in 6 inch increments and you can make a great pattern with that. That's really nice and more importantly, my wife will love it. Great. But one of the reasons I did call you were these pipes I found in my yard. This is why you always call a utility locating service before you dig. Who would ever expected to find these in your backyard? What they told us are these are low voltage communication cables. So we want to take and make these safe and that's the first thing we're going to do. Let's do it. Joe, what we're going to do is encase this pipe in sand. Sand is like a universal warning sign. Anytime you're digging and you hit sand, you stop because you know that something's buried underneath there. After we put the sand down, we're going to put in some base material and build up, and then we'll add a little more sand on top of this just to make sure it's good and protected. I want you to tamp that sand down and compact it because it's going to be under the patio and I don't want to have the patio settle where the sand is. You don't have to kill it, just pack it lightly all the way around the pipe. This is what we're going to use for the base of our patio. This is called pack or graded base and you can see it's made up of three quarter inch stone and stone dust mixed together. Now that drains pretty well but more so it packs hot as a rock. So I'm going to take and dump this out. You're going to spread about a three inch depth level and then we're going to compact that. All right? You ready? Ready. Go to it. Heads up, Joe. There you go. Coming back with more. Make sure the base gets completely compacted. I'm using a gas powered plate compactor. All right, Joe, you ready to give it a shot? Sure am. Okay, this is the accelerator right here. You're just going to pull, pull this lever and it'll start compacting. Now, I went parallel to the house. What I want you to do is do the short perpendicular links now, okay? Put your hearing protection on. You all set to go? Yep. I'm only putting down three or four inches at a time. It's called a lift because that's all I can compact with that machine. If I brought in six inches, it wouldn't be completely compact and the patio would settle. So we're gonna do it three or four inches at a time until we build it up to just the right height. Joe, we have our communication lines covered with six to eight inches of sand. Just as an added layer of insurance, we're going to put down this caution buried electric line. Okay, we're going to set it on top of the sand and then bury it with pack. So if you hold that end down there, I'm going to run down the other end. This way, 100 years from now, if someone's digging up your patio, they won't hit those lines. Put some pack right on top of that, please.
patio is really looking good, Joe, and it's nice and solid. Now we're ready to establish our grades for our bluestone. Looks good. Now, to do that, I looked at your house and I noticed that you have six inch risers coming out of the house. So when you build a set of stairs here, I'd like to keep the risers the same, six inches all the way down. So if we do that, we need a multiple of six. So we're gonna go down 30. That's five risers at six. And that's looking good. That's top of bluestone right there. That's gonna give us two inches underneath that wood and that's great to keep it from rotting. This line is a grade right here. So that shows you what we're gonna be laying on and where the bluestone is gonna be. But the first thing I did is I wanted the bluestone to line up with this edge of the deck. So we have a beautiful line going out that way. Okay. So we pulled the string line down and we brought it out here and we attached it at grade. That's gonna be the grade of the bluestone right there. Then I pulled the line 24 inches off of the deck. Now this is gonna be our first piece of bluestone. It's gonna sit right in there. But what I need to do is make sure that this line and this line are at a 90 degree angle. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to use a three, four, five method. First, we're going to measure out and hold that at the intersection of the lines. We're going to measure out three feet. And on your side, we're going to measure out four feet. All right. And then if you go across to that mark I made. Yep. It should be five. Thus the three, four, five rule. Perfect. Perfect. Now we're all set to go, except that footing is sticking out to where we want to put the bluestone. I'm going to give you a little rotary hammer to chip that off, okay? I'll get on it. All right, Joe, this is our setting bed for the bluestone. This is nine pot stone dust and one pot Portland cement. We mix it together with water. Now, it's not going to be a cement base for the stone, but it is going to conform to the bottom of it. If you look here, see all these nooks and crannies and bumps and holes? Yeah. If you tried to set that in pack or stone dust, it would end up wiggling on you and, and it wouldn't be a good set. Because it's wet, it's going to fill in all these holes. So what I want you to do is just lay in a big lather of it right in here. We'll level it off and then set the stone. I'll tell you when. Keep her coming. I'm just going to take and level it off a little bit. Okay. Put the piece in. Now I'm a little bit high, which is what I want to be. I'm going to take the rubber hammer. See how that we're hitting it like this? that's filling in all those holes underneath. Now the piece is in solid. I can see where it's actually pushing the material out on this side, so that means all those voids are filled underneath there. The important part is right here, I wanna carry that quarter inch line to make sure we're true to this line and the whole patio is gonna be nice and straight when we're done. Okay, nice and easy. There we go. Okay. Now, a couple things we're going to do. I put these black ones in to just hold this first piece in place, okay. but I'm also going to put these shims in. These are half inch shims, and that's the gap I want to have between each stone. So, what I'll do now is I'll just take and push that stone down to me a little bit. Now, we just got to get it down to the line. See how it's starting to mush out the bottom? Yep. That tells me that it's packing underneath the stone. Now that really feels solid. That feels like it's set really nice. What I want you to do is push it down towards me. A little more. See how these shims are working now? Yep. What you're going to have to do is take one of these metal stakes and tap it in right there to hold it in place. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Now I want to keep true to this line, so just take and put that one right in there for me. Good, I think we're ready for the next one. Another two by three. We're ready to start the second row. We've laid out another line 24 inches from the first line. Now what's happening here is this line is dropping. It actually drops an inch and a half so the water will run off the patio. So this line is now lower than that line. 
what we're going to do is fill this in and we're going to put in a two by three piece we started off with an 18 by 24 this is going to break that bond so it just spans every other piece so you ready ready Raja, it looks great. I love it. I can't believe we finished it in one day. Hold on there, big guy. We're not quite done yet. We have to fill in all the joints in this patio. And this is, we're going to use polymeric sand. Now, I cut a little hole in it. The trick to using this is to get it in the joint and not all over the bluestone. So we're just going to go around and fill the joints up. Grab a bag and go ahead. Once this sand hardens up, It'll stop weeds and ants from getting in here, and it'll lock these stones together. Take the broom, try to work it in the joints, okay? If you need some more, you can steal it from some place that has too much, but make sure that all the joints are filled right to the top. One thing about the sand, it's really important to get it off the surface of the bluestone. We don't want it sticking to that when we water it in. Now this is going to activate that polymer sand and it's going to harden in the joints and lock everything together. We have to wait five minutes and then water it again and then we're done. Okay. Looks nice, huh, Joe? Sure does. What a difference with those joints filled in. Like grout. Yeah, exactly. Well, Joe, you wanted a patio? You got a patio. It looks better than anything I could ever imagine, Roger.